everyone, and welcome to our latest edition of Book Trib Live, brought to you by NetGalley, Book Trib, and Merrill Moss Media. Today, we are thrilled to chat with Harlequin author Judy Duarte about her latest release, Wed by Fortune. We will be giving away copies of Wed by Fortune, so please stop by Book Trib to enter to win. Thank you so much for joining us today, Judy. Judy is a USA Today bestselling author who has written more than 50 books since 2002. When she's not working on her craft, you can find her near the beach in Southern California with her husband and son. Before we begin our questions, can you bring us up to speed on your new release and what's new in Austin Fortunes of Texas? Well, I have participated in quite a few of the different Fortunes of Texas series, and this is the first time I've had the wrap-up book, which means that I get to tie up any loose threads in the continuities that has been going on since book one. So that was really exciting for me, and I really enjoyed the storyline that they gave me um, and the opportunity to develop Graham and Sasha's story with the details that needed to be in there. So was it a little I don't know exactly. Oh, sorry. <laughs> was it a little That's intimidating a having to do the wrap-up book? Um, a little bit, but it, it, it was actually not as hard as I thought it would be, and the other authors that I work with are really awesome. I can send them a scene and say, listen, I've got your character in this scene, and this is what I've got going on. How does this, you know, does this sound like something your characters would say? It's, and, and they would correct me and say, ooh, she, you know, had a, a, a bad relationship with her father, so I don't think she would be that eager to uh, say something. And, and it worked out well that way. Okay, well, that's nice that they're, like, helping you with everything. Writing can be really lonely at times because you spend so much time in your office all by yourself and with, a, you know, imaginary characters talking in your brain. So it's kind of fun <laughs> to email another author and chat about the story and the storyline and, and suggest ways that we can improve or, or blend the, merge the stories easier. It makes you feel a little bit more sane as well, I would imagine. <laughs> Um, well, you're a California girl. Where, where do you gather your inspiration from this Texas series? I have always liked Westerns and Cowboys. I used to read Louis L'Amour novels when I was a kid. My dad and I used to watch John Wayne movies on TV and, you know, back when some of them were black and oh, when the TV was black and white. Um, <laughs> but I've always liked Westerns and Cowboys and um, I'm going to go to my first rodeo next week. Oh, you are? I guess. Yeah. I'm surprised I haven't been to one soon. I, you know, I, I don't, but I, I have always found um, cowboys, and, and I've been to Texas quite a few times, and I really like Texas. Well, make sure you bring your boots when you go. I should get a new pair. Right? In pink. <laughs> That'd be cute. Um, so um, when you first created character, the characters Graham and Sasha, did you have any actors in mind to play them? Uh, let's see. Uh, Don Jeans, the Budweiser guy, I thought he would be kind of a cool character. And yeah. um, I'm, it's slipping my mind who I had for uh, Sasha. But in my mind, sometimes sort of a, a, a young, uh, oh, this person named just the one in Top Gun. It's okay. <laughs> uh, Meg Ryan. Meg Ryan. Sorry. Oh, Meg Ryan. Okay. I went to the same high school as Meg Ryan. Oh, did you really? I mean, yeah, I years her. apart. Went there. <laughs> Bethel yeah. High School. Mm -hmm. Um, how do you come up with their names, uh, Graham Fortune Robinson and Sasha Marie Gabalt Smith? Yeah, actually, that was part of the Bible that the that Harlequin gave me. And they had come oh, okay. up with the names. Um, and so I just ran with it. Uh, Graham was actually raised as a Robinson, but his dad had been a fortune. And his oh. dad had um, more or less ran away from home, left home, and created his own life, changed his name. And just it was just recently that the kids realized that they were actually part of the fortunes family. Oh, OK. Um. Do any of the characters from the previous books, well, besides the um, Graham, make it into White by Fortune? Uh, yes. Uh, Chase Parker, who was in, I believe it was book three, possibly book four. I'm, I'm, it's slipping my mind right now. Um, he had a ranch, and he was getting rescue horses. 
And so he and Graham were friends and Graham, uh, Graham and his friend Roger Gabalt start this special ranch for troubled teens. And they take some rescued horses and put the kids together as sort of like therapy. And um, there it so that's how Chase and Graham get together in my book as well. They're getting some rescued horses from them. Oh, that's such a nice story. I love that idea. Yeah, it was really interesting. The research was interesting too, you know, that it's not just all wild mustangs that they save and yeah. um, that there are some neglected horses that just need some tender, loving care. Yeah, they need a home too. Yeah. Um, uh, what character in your book are you least likely to get along with? Wow. Oh, you know, Graham's father or possibly yeah. his mother. There's something secretive going on there, but I think we might find out in the next series in um, 2017. Yeah, I'm excited about that. I'm excited. Me too. I can't wait. Um, I can imagine at times it gets a little bit lonely, like you said, writing novels in your office. Uh, but how do you find time to escape and create your own type of romance? Well, I have a really um, sweet and loving husband who acknowledges that I have to spend a lot of alone time. And he's really cool about giving me that time and then making sure that I get out and, you know, experience real life and go out to dinner and go to movies together and walk, go for walks. So, Aww. yeah. My own personal so hero. Oh, I love that. I'm sure he'd be happy to hear that as well. <laughs> I told him there's a little bit of him in all of my heroes. <laughs> you have to have a muse somewhere, right? You bet. Um, how long does it take typically take for you to write a book? You know, I really would love to have three or four months to just let the story simmer. Um, but I can usually get one of the Harlequin books done in probably two months. But if I could have a little more time or if I, if I had my, um, my choice, I would just enjoy it. It's kind of like reading a good book. You just want to spend more time with the characters. Did you ever get yeah. to the end of a story and say, oh my gosh, I wish I, would, I wish I wouldn't have stayed up all night reading because now I have nothing to read. Oh yeah. You, kind of, you, like, you kind of have to stop yourself from reading <laughs> just to exactly. enjoy it. And so that's what, so that's what I mean. Um, pardon me, but my phone is ringing in the background. Can you hear that? It's okay. I hope not. I'm not answering it. <laughs> um, anyway, for the same reason, when I'm writing a book, I get really involved with the characters and they become real and they speak to me and I've got scenes coming up. And that's one reason that I wish I could stretch the story out longer so that I can enjoy them longer. Mm -hmm. Do these characters fill your dreams then if you're constantly with them? You know, it's just it, they become real and it's it's kind of like they they kind of play out on this stage in your mind. I know it's kind of hard to understand if you don't have a writer brain, but I belong to a few writers groups and I realize I'm not strange. They all do the same thing. You're not alone. It's OK. You're not alone. <laughs> Doesn't make you feel it will make you feel a little bit less crazy, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Um, well, I know that you've written many, many books. Do you know the exact number? And do you have a favorite one? Um, I think it's 55, maybe at this point. I'm pushing 55. So, um, well, the first book was always my favorite. It was called yeah. Cowboy Courage. And mm -hmm. um, I had two Rita nominees. The, um, one was Mayberry, uh, excuse me. Mulberry Park and Entertaining Angels. Both of those were favorites too. Um, all the Fortunes books. I really, um, I just love the series and I, I like reading what the authors have done with the storylines they were given. And um, it's just fun to follow the Mendozas and the Fortunes. Well, I can only imagine how big your bookshelf is if there's 55 that you wrote. <laughs> I used to keep them in the office and I finally had to move them out so that I have room for other things. Collecting dust, right? Yeah. And I used to keep like um, copies of all of the books. But if you take five copies of 55 books, you know, it ends up being quite a few to have stored in the garage, too. <laughs> um, sorry, I lost my thought. 
So um, I know that English was like, your least favorite subject in school, but what subjects did you enjoy? I really like history, uh, social sciences. Um, actually, I was pretty good at math. I didn't mind math at all. Um, but history, or I mean, English kind of threw me the grammar part. And I've always just been a little uneasy about maybe it's because I had such a strict ninth grade English teacher who taught Latin one, two, three, and four, and she was um, scary. <laughs> but um, I mean, I graduated from college, so it's not that I can't put a sentence together, but maybe it's just English, the English language was a little intimidating. And so I'm really glad that I have an editor who watches out for that stuff. Well, that's good that she helps you, or he. She, English was scary for me too. I just enjoyed the reading part, not the writing. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, what advice would you give for any writers to fine tune their craft besides hiring an editor? <laughs> you know, what I would suggest is, um, if, especially if you're writing romance, uh, Romance Writers of America is an awesome writing organization that's really, really helpful to um, aspiring authors as well as published authors. They have an awesome national conference in July each year. This year it's going to be in San Diego. Um, but periodically they have it in New York City, they have it in Orlando, Denver, Houston, all over the place. So it's a fun time to travel, but you can also get amazing workshops and you can network with other authors. I think that when you dream of writing a book of your own, you don't realize how many um, avenues there are out there to help you. And so Romance Writers of America is one. There's a children's a society of children's writers and book illustrators. I may be getting the, the title wrong, but it's for kids who are writing or for people who are writing kids children's books. Okay. Um, there's also Sisters in Crime if you're writing more like thrillers or mysteries. So there, there are a lot of writing groups I would suggest getting involved in one. But Romance Writers of America is really, really helpful. Great advice. Thank you so much. Um, what did you want to do when you grew up? When you were little at it? Um, you know, <laughs> I, I talked about possibly um, becoming a teacher and I wanted to be a nurse. And when I was in college, I majored in uh, uh, psychology and psych and social behavior. So all of that has now worked well for creating stories if I have a medical background or usually there's a message that I'm trying to, along with giving you an escape and a nice story, I want to give you a little message about doing the right thing and second chances and forgiveness and that there's always some kind of a moral behind the story. And I think those things I took in class um, actually helped. Oh, well, that seemed to work out for you then. Yes, it did. You're destined to be a writer, I guess. You know, I think so, but I, you know, I didn't start writing until the 90s. Um, mm -hmm. I just was reading all the time, and one day I thought, you know, I think I can do better than this. I think I could write a better book. I think I could have a better ending. And so um, I decided to buy a computer because I didn't think I could do it longhand or on an old typewriter and just started. I didn't know what I was doing, but about six months into the process, I learned about Romance Writers of America, went to my first meeting, and that's that's where I learned the craft. I like that story. That's so cute. <laughs> um, <clears throat> your story of returning to school and then um, and graduating from UC Irvine while raising your children is truly inspiring. What words of wisdom would you um, would you say to you, uh, sorry, what words of wisdom would you say to our viewers who want to go back to school and make their dreams come true like you? Do it. I, when I first wanted to go back to school, I thought, oh, I'm going to be 35 years old before I get a degree. And I thought, you know, I'm going to be 35 years old anyway, with or without one, I'd rather have one. It actually took a little longer than that because I remarried and, um, in the, in the middle of it. And so I, I started taking not a full-time schedule. I, I would just pick a few classes here and there. So it did take a little bit longer, but I am not at all sorry I did it. Um, I, I, I would really encourage people, if you want to go back to school, do it, even if it's one class a day. Mm -hmm. It's kind of yeah. like writing a book. 
a lot of people, you know, they think they want to write a book, but they're overwhelmed by the whole process or, you know, how could I possibly find time to write a book? But if you wrote one page every day, you would have a book in a year. That's a very good point. And what's the worst that happens? <laughs> you end up with book. <laughs> um, what does your family think of your writing? You know, they're real supportive, especially now. They were real supportive at the beginning and they're real supportive now. But there was a time when um, I was struggling to become published the first time, like the early 2000, well, 2001 is when I sold the first book. Let's say 99 and 2000, they knew how hard I was trying and they knew that I was entering contests and they knew that my critique partners had both sold to Harlequin. And they were, I think, wanting to be supportive, but not quite sure you know, if if this was the right um, path for me to take, if this was the right choice I'd made. And then, of course, once the first book sold, it just everything just opened up at that time. And now they're very happy. Oh, great. Do they read your books? <laughs> well, some of them do. My husband has read he reads um, he read the first book and he read probably number 45. And he's read scenes of different books, because especially if I have um, a fight scene or an argument or something with a, a the male I want the male perspective I want to know if this is the way a guy would really act I think they would I think they would say this and he's been really good about reading that and and saying yes or yeah it needs a little work <laughs> that's so that's so nice of him though I don't think I could ever get my boyfriend to read my I Harlequin book <laughs> well oh, I bet he would I bet I bet he would well, maybe if I was writing it, just maybe. <laughs> well, I've had quite a few men that think they don't read that kind of a book, but yet read one and be really intrigued by it and say, you know, these are actually pretty good. Yeah. And, you know, I know that, I know that a, at least one other author I know, her husband even wrote a book with her. So. Yeah, yeah. that's exciting. And you guys can both be involved and share it together. Yeah. Mm hmm. Well, you seem to be quite the storyteller. Are you the talkative one out of your friends? Yeah, sometimes. But I, I guess, yeah, you know, I just found out that I'm a little bit of an introvert because I am the talkative one. I'm, but I will need to shut down every once in a while and just have some alone time and fill the well. But I tend to be chatty. Chatty Kathy. <laughs> yeah, chatty Judy. <laughs> Chatty Judy. <laughs> I like that. Maybe that could be the next title of your book. <laughs> oh, there you go. <laughs> um, so I know that you recently spent time in Maui. Did you have a favorite writing spot when you were there? Oh, I did. Almost anywhere. Um, just um, outside, there was a patio, and it was it was a ground level condo, and just sitting on the patio, and it was quiet and peaceful, and the air is just so clean. So mm -hmm. just getting that tropical breeze and the warm sunshine and just just the happiness. A busy bee over there. Yeah, I, you know, it gets busy sometimes. I have five kids and a, a mom that, you know, needs to chat sometimes. And even when I say I'm going to be busy. <laughs> it's no worries at all. <clears throat> Well, I know that you went to Hawaii, but um, are there any vacation spots that are on your bucket list that you haven't checked off? Actually, yes. I would really like to go to Ireland and Scotland. And while I'm there, I'd like to go to England as well. So the United Kingdom, Wales, I think would be fun. But I also would like to go to Germany and Switzerland. So it's going to have to be an extended stay so I can fit everything in and still have time to see things. Sounds like a three month vacation at least. <laughs> Wouldn't that be nice? <laughs> I would do that. Travel the world for a couple of months. <laughs> there you go. Um, when you're not writing, how else do you spend your free time? Um, well, I like walking. I have a personal trainer that I've been working with. Um, I love to read. I like movies. Um, I just saw You Without Me and it was so funny and so weepy at the end, but it was so good and I would see it again. So, yeah, I keep up with the movies as best I can. But I do like, I do like more of the romantic comedy. And Western. And Western, of course. <laughs> <laughs> probably not Aliens and Cowboys, though. No, probably not that one. 
<laughs> um, what books can we find on your nightstand right now? Um, let's see. The Rescued by Marta Perry is on my nightstand. Um, I have something by Kristen Higgins. I'm not entirely sure the title. Um, actually, the stack starts getting really high because I have so many books I want to read and not enough time to read them. Uh, I have a Jody Picoult book. <laughs> and Those Nicholas Sparks is on tears. there, too. Tear I know. jerkers. Yeah, I know. Do you ever read any thrillers or mysteries? You know, sometimes I do. Um, I do like Lisa Jackson. Um, so, yeah, I do. I'm a James Patterson fan. <laughs> uh, he, he's good. Yeah, my library is like filled with his books. <laughs> um, we still have a little more time, so I think we're going to try and take some questions from the viewers. Um, I have one right now. Uh, do you have a favorite moment from your book? Um, yeah, I, I, it's actually at the very beginning of the book when Sasha Marie arrives back at her uncle's ranch and she's been away for um, about seven years. She went to college and, and got married to a guy who didn't approve of. And when she gets out of the car, um, she, she's told him she's coming back. And he knows she has a little girl, but he doesn't realize she's seven months pregnant until she gets out of the car and, oops, surprise. <laughs> Here it is. Yeah. Yeah. What makes oh, that was fun to create a story like that. I can imagine. Um, what makes a good storyteller? Do you have to um, give a checklist of how to go about executing it? Actually, I do. What I, what I, when I'm going to create a story, I create a character that I think I'd like to spend, you know, the next 250 some pages with. And um, I wound them. I give them some kind of a, either an emotional scar or a, um, it can be physical, but if the physical scar has some kind of an emotional wound as well. And then I ask myself, okay, I'm going to make them sexually attracted to somebody but who would be the worst possible person for them to be attracted to if they don't want to change, if, they, if they're okay with the status quo in their life. And so I put them together and of course, as they, I wound that, the, if I start with a girl or a woman, then the guy has to be wounded as well, but they, they're, they're opposite. Just, are you following what I'm trying to do with my hands? I do, I see it. <laughs> my grandmother was French and her hands moved a lot. <laughs> Right. Um, like, for example, I created a character once that he had been a pawn in his family's, um, his mom and dad had gone through a divorce, but they had fought over everything. Even after the divorce was final, they used the kid as a pawn and, you know, I'll get you a computer. If you live with me, I'll get you a new car. And finally, he'd had it. And he told himself if he ever went through a divorce, he would never fight for custody of his kid. And of course, this is backstory. But he does find himself the, the father of a child and his wife leaves him for somebody else. And so he walks away, but it tears him up something fierce. And when you read the first page, I mean, you know, this guy is really suffering because he hasn't seen his child and he's paid money monthly. But before the first of the month, he's got a life insurance policy looking out for this kid the best he can, but not trying not to interfere in the boy's life because of his own baggage. So I asked myself, who would be the worst possible person for him to be attracted to? And I thought, a woman going through a custody battle of her own. And so I made them be neighbors because he's house sitting. And I put this darling little girl in there that keeps going over to visit the cat. He's cat sitting. And they're constantly together. And of course, they both learn how it's okay if you don't fight over a child. It's like you need to be a part of the child's life. And, and so he has to work through those issues but that's how i do it sounds like the psychologist in you <laughs> exactly yeah and then i want to fix things i want them to be nice but you can't let them fix it until the very end because then you lose your story yeah i got to keep the readers on the edge of their seat there you go i have um two more questions coffee or tea coffee in the morning tea in the afternoon any particular type of coffee or tea? Um, you know, I like a green tea. 
um, not herbal. I, I do like regular tea and coffee. You know, I've gotten kind of fond of Starbucks lately, <laughs> like everybody else. It's hard not to like it. So easy. <laughs> Um, so now it's summer. Do you have any plans for writing? Do you have a new book coming? Um, I do have plans for writing. I write every day and I'm working on an, a, another project now. And then I, the next thing I will be jumping into the next fortunes book. So yeah, I've got a, a and I have a book coming out in October. That's um, the setting is basically a retirement home for old cowboys called the rocking chair ranch. And so the stories all kind of, intertwine with this and a rodeo um they're calling it rocking Cho chair rodeo because the rodeo is helping to support the ranch mm -hmm. um so that one's coming out and that's exciting what if, i love but that I name though and it's a cute idea mm -hmm. any plans with the, your uh, large family any plans for excuse me with your large family oh um yes they're planning a camping trip uh, at Shaver Lake coming up this summer, and I think I'm going to join them. And we, I was in Maui with my son and his family, and we talked about, you know, we need to have a family reunion on Maui, and we thought, yeah, that'd be really great. Maybe not this summer, but soon. Can I come? <laughs> you can, you can. Thanks, Judy. <laughs> well, unfortunately, we've come to the end of our chat, but I just wanted to thank you, Judy, and all of our viewers for joining us to talk about Wed by Fortune. Thank, Thank you, you again, Virginia. Judy. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye.